Why the first flight of the A350 is a milestone for Airbus? What are the challenges for the, this new family of aircraft? First of all, it's most likely not only the most important milestone, it's without any doubt in the development of an aircraft the most emotional, uh, the most emotional milestone. So, um, somebody asked me last week, uh, how would you describe this moment in time? And I said it's tears and goosebumps, and on the other side it's pride, joy and happiness. Why is it so important for the development as such? It's the first aircraft built, and uh, we have done lots of mathematical simulations, uh, but we first know how the aircraft behaves if we have it uh, in the air. I talked to our chief pilot on the first flight last week, some three weeks ago, and he said, Ginder, do you know what? I think I know the aircraft. Give me the real aircraft to prove if I have understood the aircraft. That's why it is so important for us. Your competitor Boeing turned the page on the battery uh, issues issue. Uh, for the A350, Airbus chosen a more conservative approach. Did this problem teach something to aircraft manufacturers about the pace of technological innovation and the innovation of manufacturing process? I think first of all it's important to mention uh, that we have not changed the technology from lithium iron to cadmium uh, nickel because we did not believe uh, in the robustness uh, of our lithium-ion uh, concept uh, and the technology as such. Uh, but we were not sure, since we had to take a decision at a point of time where the investigation on the Boeing issue was not completed, what we might see and face at the end uh, by the certification authorities. So therefore, we said we don't take any risk. We can take a decision in good time without risking the program timing on our side uh, by swapping the technology, but keeping at the same point of time the option to introduce at any later point of time uh, our lithium ion concept, which we still consider a safe one. So therefore, coming back to the question, what have we learned? What we have learned is, in particular on, uh, on the innovations, follow your innovation uh, technology confirmation and approval process and only the ones which have successfully passed what we call industrial readiness or conceptual readiness should be on the concept definition of a new aircraft. We think we follow the process and that's the reason why we believe that our lithium ion technology would have been pretty robust. The A400M is finally in its delivery phase after some delay. How do you see the future of this program? I think the, the future of the A400M, since it is a great aircraft, I think you have seen the aircraft uh, flying. We have certainly realized uh, that this is a very special aircraft, which is not just ready to fly, it's an aircraft which is uh, ready for its mission. Uh, so therefore, this aircraft is going to have a great future, a great future for its current customers. So the nations who have uh, ordered uh, the aircraft for this particular mission, uh, so to serve as a military aircraft. But we also do see a great future for this aircraft uh, for different uh, purposes. In this air show, Airbus uh, uh, registered new orders for the A380. Uh, are you confident that in the next years uh, the A380 sales will attain new records? I think first of all we need to restate that the A380 is a success, a success story uh, on its own. The fact that we haven't uh, collected that many orders in the year 2012 uh, should not be translated into oh the future of the A380 is not secured. The confidence of uh, Doreg as uh, the third largest uh, leasing company as far as uh, portfolio is concerned, I think is a very strong message because they take it on their portfolio because they believe that this is uh, the aircraft uh, which should uh, find its way as the flagship aircraft, not only uh, with, the, with the large customers, 
who also could have signed a contract directly uh, with Airbus, also for the smaller airlines uh, who have destinations and routes where the A380 is the transport and most eco-efficient uh, transport and most profitable transport uh, solution, uh, even without uh, ordering a large-scale number uh, of the A380. If we take the future of the A380 and uh, we just take a couple of references. Uh, first reference, uh, we expect um, uh, a significant number uh, of additional mega cities uh, coming up uh, over the next 10-15 uh, years. We expect uh, more restrictions as far as uh, air traffic uh, control is concerned. We do believe that you can actually put a larger aircraft easier in place than building a new runway. Uh, so therefore, I think the A380 uh, has uh, a great uh, perspective. Uh, and uh, since A380 has never been built uh, to be the short-term solution, has always been considered as a strategic transport solution uh, for the future growth uh, of air traffic. Um, I think uh, A380 uh, is the right answer uh, to a quite uh, a challenging task. Well, last question. You are already manufacturing in China. You open a factory in the United States. Uh, will this process of decentralization continue? I think with uh, the decision to go to China uh, and with the decision to go to the US uh, with mobile, we have addressed uh, the largest and the second largest uh, air traffic uh, markets uh, in the world, where we even expect uh, that uh, America and China might uh, change on the first, uh, on, on the second place. Uh, the decision to go to China has been proven a success because we have gained in a very short period of time more than 50% uh, of the market share. And the decision to go to the US is certainly going to pay back uh, as well uh, because we expect uh, to be considered a local player. And as a local player, we have access to a market uh, which is uh, pretty attractive and huge. So, therefore, since there are not that many other markets which show the same characteristics, I would say for the time being, this is uh, a core element of our globalization strategy.